What is up everyone, Capital Gains here, and today I will be going over what the difference is between growth stocks and dividend stocks. Here's everything I will be going over. You can pause the video if you want to read it, but I will be but I'll be reading over everything here while going over my Robinhood portfolio. So just watch the entire video and you will get all the information. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so I can make more content like this. And if you want to learn anything else, just leave a comment in the video and I will do my best to get that out to you. Now, a growth stock is a stock that is anticipated to grow at a rate significantly above the average growth for the market. These stocks usually don't pay dividends because they want to reinvest any earnings they accrue back into the company in order to accelerate growth in the short term. When someone invests into a growth stock, they anticipate that they will earn money through capital gains when they eventually sell their shares in the future. Here's a reminder of what capital gains are. A capital gain is an increase in a capital's asset value. It is considered to be realized when you sell the asset. Put simply, this is the money you gain by selling any security for a price higher than you bought it for. Now, investments in growth stock can be risky because they typically do not offer dividends. The only opportunity an investor has to earn money on their investment is when they eventually sell their shares. If the company does not do well, investors take a loss on the stock when it's time to sell. Growth stocks tend to share a few common traits. For example, growth companies tend to have unique product lines. They may hold patents or have access to technologies that put them ahead of others in their industry. In order to stay ahead of the competitors, they reinvest profits to develop even newer technologies and patents as a way to ensure long-term growth. Amazon, right here that I'm showing on the screen, has long been considered a growth stock. It has historically traded at a high price to earning or P slash E ratio. When a company is expected to grow, investors remain willing to invest, even at a high P-E ratio. This is because several years down the road, the current stock price may look cheap in hindsight. The risk is that growth doesn't continue as expected. Investors have paid a high price expecting one thing and not getting it. In such cases, a growth stock's price can fall dramatically. So as you can see, when I bought my fraction share of 0.010445, of Amazon, it was for $3,061.75. And right now, it is at $3,167.12. Now, Amazon doesn't pay out dividends, so the only way that I would make money off of this is if it goes up and then I sell it. The risky thing about this is that if it goes down and it never comes back up, then I would lose that money. But we all know that Amazon's a pretty safe bet because it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Now we will turn over to dividend stocks. A dividend stock is a company that pays out regular dividends. Dividend stocks are usually well-established companies with a track record of distributing earnings back to shareholders. And a dividend is the distribution of some of the company's earnings to a class of its shareholders as determined by the company's board of directors. Common shareholders of dividend paying companies are typically eligible as long as they own the stock before the X dividend date. Dividends may be paid out as cash or in form of additional stocks. The way I have it set up is that it pays me in cash and I reinvest it back into the stock. That way it keeps growing so that the next time it pays out a dividend, hopefully I will get more than the first time. The board of directors can choose to issue dividends over various time frames and with different payout rates. Dividends can be paid at a schedule frequency such as a monthly, quarterly, or annually. For example, Walmart and Unilever make regular quarterly dividend payments. As you can see right here, the Walmart dividend yield is 1.64. And if you were to buy Walmart before the date they announce what they're gonna do with the dividend payments, you would qualify to be paid that dividend payment. If you don't make it within this quarter, then you just have to wait until the next quarter to get it. And Unilever has a dividend yield of 3.43. Companies pay dividends for a variety of reasons. These reasons can have different implications and interpretations for investors. Dividends can be expected by the shareholder as a reward for their trust in a company. 
the company management may aim to honor these sentiments by delivering a robust track record of dividend payments. Dividend payments reflect positively on a company and help maintain investors' trust. Dividends are also preferred by shareholders because they are treated as tax-free income for shareholders in many countries. Conversely, capital gains realized through the sale of a share whose price has increased is considered taxable income. Traders who look for short-term gain may also prefer to get dividend payments that offer instant tax-free gains. A high-value dividend declaration can indicate that the company is doing well and has generated good profits, but it can also indicate that the company does not have suitable projects to generate better returns in the future. Therefore, it is utilizing its cash to pay shareholders instead of reinvesting it into growth. If a company has a long history of dividend payments, a reduction of the dividend amount or its elimination may signal to investors that the company is in trouble. The announcement of a 50% decrease in dividends from General Electric, one of the biggest American industrial companies, was accompanied by a decline of more than 6% in GE stock price on November 13th, 2017. And what that means is when they announced a cut of half of their dividends, people lost faith in that company and pulled out because uh, they thought that the company wasn't gonna do well because they had been paying dividends for so long that since they were cutting it, that they must be going down and people decided to jump ship before anything bad really happened. Another good example of this is Disney. Disney last year cut their dividend completely and haven't paid out in about a year because of what was happening. Now, we all know Disney is not doing all that bad. It's actually doing a lot better than when I initially bought it for $103.24 cuz now each stock is worth $190. But the cutting in the dividend kind of signaled that something wasn't right. A reduction in dividend amounts or a decision against making any dividend payments may not necessarily translate into bad news about a company. It may be possible that the company's management has better plans for investing the money. Giving its financials and operations, for example, a company's management may choose to invest in a high return project that has the potential to magnify returns for shareholders in the long run as compared to the petty gains they will realize through dividend payments. Now that's what Disney did. They cut their dividend completely and ended up using that money to reinvest in themselves so that they could increase their stock price and money for the next coming years. Hopefully they'll bring back the dividends soon, but they are reopening and opening new attractions in their parks later this year, so that should pay off more if not the same as if they still had the dividends. I hope this video was informative. If you want more of it, leave something in the comments about what you would like me to explain. If there's anything that you're still confused on, I'll make a follow-up video. If you'd like to set up your own Robinhood account, I will have a link in the description below. You just click on that. It'll send you to the app or website. You use my referral code when you sign up and you will get a free stock and that's really cool because whether it goes up or down you will still be in the green because it was free so you can't lose money on it you can only gain money i will also have a link to acorn savings account if you don't want to do your own research and just let them do everything for you all you have to do is use my link when you sign up by using my link you will get five free dollars sent straight to you it will automatically invest that for you and if you link your bank account and tie any of your cards in, anytime you use that, it will round up your purchase to the next dollar. It will send that money straight to Acorns and they will invest for you. It is completely passive. You don't have to do anything. And there are graphs that shows you your potential portfolio value in 5, 10, or 20 years. I'm also going to put up Yoda Savings. It's a fun way to save. Use my link for that. You'll get a hundred free tickets for the week. So you can test it out. If you get any of the numbers or all of the numbers, you can make anywhere between 10 cents to a million dollars. It's a fun way to save. Um, every $25 you put into the account, you will get a free ticket every single week. And I will also have a link to my Redbubble store where you can get the capital gains 
logo. And there is a bunch of other art there that you can check out. Really cool. So go head that way and see what's there. Besides all that, it was a pretty uneventful week. I will be back next week with dividends that I have earned. Until then, I will see you all later.